Thank you very much. It's a great honor and pleasure to be here at this distinguished panel and of course also my first time in Delphi actually, so marvelous, beautiful. I'd like simply to compliment what we heard up to, up to now because I, I do think this, those were very important contributions to our debate and I'd like basically to make uh, three points. First on growth in Europe where we shouldn't look too much at because that's an average and we have much more to care about dispersion, in particular if we're interested in what's going to happen to banks, because banks in Europe are largely a bet on their national environment. So dispersion is of, of great importance. The second point has, uh, I, I'd like to talk about is monetary policy as a device, not only as monetary policy in terms of supporting the banking industry, making it able to serve its, its clients, but also in terms of its stabilizing role and what might happen going, going forward. And uh, finally, I'd like to make a few uh, points sticking within the eight minutes on the institutional setup of, of Europe to which um, Governor Papopoulos was also uh, uh, alluding, highlighting that this is an urgent need of, uh, of improvement. But there are simply different perspectives how this should uh, sh should look like. So let me make the f first point. Uh, banks are not a purpose in their own. The, the ultimate purpose is to, to serve their, their, their clients. That's where they derive their value from. In 2007, German banks were seen as highly successful. One bank which had a return on equity, apparently, of 24% was um, lauded in the press loudly. Two weeks later, they were belly up. So it is of the essence to think about those issues, not from the perspective of an individual bank, but to take a systemic pers perspective. So you, you can easily be in an environment where apparently all banks are doing well, which they did in July 2007, but the system as, as such running into deep trouble, rapidly, out of a sudden. That's why we now talk, which was forbidden of at that time, about macroprudential instruments. The first market which blew up was the interbank money market. Spreads widening out dramatically. That would be a place where I would like to use a, use a charge, which was very much unprecedented. So, I do think policymakers have to go beyond the microprudential. And this is where this macro uh, environment comes in. We are in a rather healthy phase. Uh, your area economy has been growing since, uh, two, uh, since 2014. Uh, growth has been accelerating, but that's the average of Europe. You find too many places in Europe regions in Europe which are not doing that well. And it has been driven the European growth in particular by a few strong economies which are largely influenced by external demand. The German economy has been doing well because it's capital goods oriented, uh, driven by um, a, a healthy growth in, in global trade so we are betting in terms of continuation of this trend on the world economy going forward as well as it does. One might have questions with regard to that. So this is the second point I'd like to, to pick up. Uh, Chair, you have to give me an indication where I am because I haven't used my watch. So the second issue is about resilience. NPLs usually show on a massive scale when you have an economy going down and they show up in a rather concentrated part of the dispersion of, 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 of so the even whilst the average firm might be doing well, you see uh, trouble cooking up at the end of the distri distributions and that happens very rapidly. So we have to be thinking about how to make not only individual banks 
more resilient, but the system is such more, more resilient. What we now all laud, even bankers applaud to, to it, is what bankers, of course, have been fighting ferociously, uh, Basel III, in particular capital requirements and uh, liquidity requirements, which were not part of, as you all know, which were not part of, of Basel II before, but there was nothing about liquidity actually involved. Now look, let's look at uh, 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 banks which are now known to everybody, but were not um, actually uh, taken care of at, at the time. So there's one British bank, one UK bank, who had a core tier one uh, ratio of 13%, 13, which blew up. Uh, why did they blow up? Because they had an average duration on the asset side of four years and an average duration on the liability side of two days. So they had to roll over liabilities on, a, on uh, every other day. This is now to some degree uh, dealt with with regard to net st uh, stable funding ratio and also liquidity coverage ratio. But those liquidity crises are systemic, meaning um, it might look nice in terms under fair weather conditions, uh, in terms of uh, access to funds, but it can easily turn into highly difficult and problematic in environment uh, when the macro context uh, doesn't work. That's why all those activities on the part of um, the ECB has been so important. It was ultimately uh, highlighting the capacity to roll over in, uh, in June 2012, which, which saved uh, the system. So this is, again, not an idiosyncratic problem. It's a, it's a systemic problem. Um, let me come to my third and, and final point. When we were faced at the Bundesbank, I was at the, t at the time uh, responsible for markets at the Bundesbank in 2007, uh, we had the diagnosis, as the ECB at the time also later on did, or the European system of central banks, this is a systemic crisis. There was another diagnosis which held, no, it's the issue of uh, an in individual bank. Let them face their troubles, otherwise if we help them, um, they will behave even worse next time round. So all the, the discussion about moral hazard um, and so forth. At the time, it was, uh, of course, a run in the wholesale market. That is, uh, interbank money markets not prepared to roll over credit. And that was highly uh, dependent on where those banks were coming from. That's why the European uh, target system has so been so important in terms of stabilizing uh, the banking system. So the, the point I'd, I'd like to, to, to finally highlight here is it's good that we have the ECB, it's good that we have this capacity to, to intervene and, inter, um, and, and, and act on the, on the side of ECB, but I didn't want to conclude on a positive note, Chair. Um, not because I'm coming from the north and we don't have as much um, sun as you do here. Uh, but this uh, cycle is now a very long-lasting one. We might be, uh, um, might be faced with uh, trouble rather soon. That's why all those bets on uh, the ECB getting rapidly out of its um, very easing monetary policy uh, might turn out to be difficult to, to hold. It will be fiendishly difficult, of course, to get towards a level of interest rates which we used to understand as normal. So we might uh, be faced with a situation over the next two years which are not as benign as they have been told to, uh, to us just before. Before you raise your yellow card, I'll stop here. Thank, thank you very much for your attention.